All right. So now we get to down by the returner. So we started with the, the four man sled, just trying to reestablish the line of scrimmage. Then we've gone to the line of scrimmage work where we're engaged. All right. And as that guy starts to release, we're dropping the downfield arm or versus a spinner, letting them spin out and then reconnecting. So as we get close to the returner, I got a couple little drills here um, that we usually do with the outside guys, but it, it definitely can be used for anybody. Um, so when we get down towards the returner, there's a couple ways once we get there that, that we can make a block. Um, we can rip by, which I always say that's the last ditch effort um, because more times than not, guys rip by people in their back, which just because you're doing a rip by, you can't go through a guy's back. Then we have a little bit of a washout where you're just simply fitting on the guy and, and driving him out because you're in position. Um, and then we got to knock the arm down. Um, so we do all three of those right here. And then this part of the drill, I do a lot. Um, and I always talk about our guys not being spectators. And when you're running downfield on punt return, punt return is really probably one of the longest plays in football. Not everything ever goes how it's drawn up on that nice sheet of paper or on the board. Um, bodies hit the ground, people are getting knocked down. Um, you may lose at the line of scrimmage, right? and you're running down the field and the only thing you see is your guy in front of you. And only bad things happen when, when you keep chasing. So we always tell the guys, go look for work. So you're running down the field and you can't make your block. All right, let's put our foot in the ground. Let's get to the return direction side. And let's not like that clip earlier where we had 52 running down looking like he was on the punt team, all right? We're going to keep the runway clean for the returner as much as possible. So we're just going to put our foot in the ground, get to the return direction side, and we're going to go find work. All right. So this is a, a drill where you can get a couple bodies uh, going at the same time. So you can get about, you could probably add somebody else in there if you wanted to. So right now, number eight in, in uh, number 23 are the punt return team. And then the white jersey in 37, uh, I'm sorry, the white jersey in 23 are the punt team and 37 and eight are the punt return team. So eight, when we get down to the returner, we're knocking the arm down. So the cover guy in the white jersey has shown his arm and we're simply trying to tomahawk chop that arm down to open up the chest all right, and then watch that guy out. All right, what I think we probably could do a better job of is once that arm gets knocked down and you open up the chest and you start blocking, you need to anticipate that that gunner, essentially the white jersey as a gunner, he's not just going to let you wash him out. He's going to probably put his foot in the ground, spin out. So we need, I think, at Winnipeg, need to improve on the fact that this white jersey is going to probably spin out sorry and we need to be in a position to spin out with them all right 37 he's running downfield he has nobody to block maybe he lost his guy all right so we know for us this is a left i'm sorry a right return for the punt return team all right so he's going to wheel to the return direction and he's going to go find work all right and the first guy he puts his hands on, he's married to that guy. So many times you see 37 put his hands on 23 and then somebody else flashes and he goes, oh, I'll go get that guy. And, and 23 ends up making the tackle. So what we wanna do is as soon as we put our hands on a guy, he's married to him. And if there's somebody else looking for work, then they'll go find work elsewhere. <laughs> All right, 
So again, knocking the arm down. So 34 is the gunner. All right, we're gonna chop down the arm, open the chest. And then here's a little bit better version by 52, all right? And again, it doesn't matter who's doing these drills. It, this could happen to interior guys running down the field, could be outside on a gunner, all right? But we knock the arm down, we open the chest, and now we're anticipating your man retracing and try to get back to the returner. All right, and then for us, 22, just looking for work. All right. All right. Here, we're just going rip by. All right. And again, for me, I would much rather try to knock the arm down or wash a guy out at the, at the, at the returner than rip by. All right. And five years now, I, I, I still don't believe that guys get it down perfectly. I think they feel that once they throw their arm up in the air and they go by a guy that their job is done. Usually all the guy does, the cover guy is gonna do is club you by and make the play. So this last stitch effort, I essentially wanna hip check the cover guy and I'm just using my arm to throw it across his body to make sure that we're on the correct side. We're not blocking him in the back. But our hip check is really trying to knock, what I tell the guys is, we're trying to knock him one yard off of his path. We're trying to redire redirect him one yard off his path. All right, and then again, 40, he's just looking for work, all right? It's just a way for guys to get in the habit of, of not watching the play unfold. <clears throat> this You could probably actually do something like this for, for defensive guys on turnovers. One more rip by. So we're, we're essentially hip checking it and we're throwing the arm in front of the face. That way we know if our arm is in front of the face, we know the body is not hit, hitting from behind. Better job by 40 of anticipating that guy trying to get back into the play. <clears throat> All right, and then the last part at at the returner is just a little washout block. So we're coming down with great leverage. Now, the rules in the CFL, I'm not sure about in college up here, but have tried to eliminate the kill shots, all right? And for our guys, kill shots end up making them lighter in the wallet. So we do everything we can to try to not only not get a penalty, but save them some cash. So a couple of years ago, all right, here's our return guy and here's their cover guy. If he ear hold him, it would probably be perfectly fine. Now they might call you for a blindside hit. So all we're really trying to do is we're in perfect position. We're not we're blocking them from the side. We're not blocking them from behind. And we're essentially just fitting them up and we're washing them and creating just a little bit more of a, an alley for our returner to hit. All right, and again, we're just looking for work up top. And it, it uh, you know, you'd think maybe it's, it's just part of a, like a throw in to the drill that the that this part is the main part, but you'd be surprised how many times in the return game that somebody's running down the field with nothing to do. Um, and if they simply would just turn and 
locate somebody to the return direction side, um, that might be the difference in a 10 or a 50 yard return. And this is a kind of a point I make to our guys a lot is as you're running down when these gunners, because of the possibility of no yards, all right, when they start to throttle down because of the threat of no yards, that's when you should be thinking in your head as a, as a blocker, this is my opportunity to get in position and front him up because you don't have to slow down and worry about no yards. They do. So once they start to throw, throttle down, you should try to, we talk about trying to turn it up one more gear so that we could get almost into this position where we fronted them and we're still on the return direction shoulder. <clears throat> 